Hey, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Well, you can see a little red on the screen, which is something new. It seems like we haven't had a lot of that lately. The uh, Dow Jones finished almost at its lows of the day, down about 90 points. Had a uh, kind of a late day rally, uh, you know, maybe about oh, a couple hours before the close. Kind of hung around down 50, down 60, and then sold off uh, right at the end. Finishing real close to its lows of the day. So you can see the Dow Jones did hold up better than most of the other indices. The NASDAQ really took it on the chin, down about 1% down almost 32 points. Uh, Russell 2000, mid-caps, down almost 90 basis points. Of course, money flocked out of stocks, went into treasuries, and so you see TLT there up almost 1%, uh, interest rates being down. And the volatility index, still under 14, but uh, up almost 10% on the day. Well, let's go ahead and start off with the S&P 500 as we normally do. Uh, As you can see, the... uh, Looks like the the bulls aren't necessarily um, uh, given in just yet. Aren't you know turning from bulls to bears? But it does look like there is an apprehension to uh, buy stocks at this point. You're starting to see things just become a little lethargic, a little tired. And you know the big concern I think for for most is not necessarily the Cyprus news, which is which is big. And and if you haven't been following that, go Google it because there's plenty on it. Uh, yes, it's it's a very small, uh, the size of it's not very big, but it has ramifications that trickle throughout the the uh, whole global economy. In fact, if you if you go back and and look in the 1997 during the uh, Russian debt situation, uh, had to do with Thailand, same same kind of scenario, and so you know it has ramifications, and something will get done. This will pass, I believe. It is kind of scary that you could wake up and 10% of your savings uh, are eliminated, which is essentially what they did or what they are planning to do. Now, they could do something where they, they basically compromise and say, hey, we're going to take your savings now, and then we're going to give you a long-term bond instead. So we're still going to give your money back. It's just going to be way in the future. Uh, either way, it's not right. Can't imagine something like that happening in the United States. Probably wouldn't happen, <laughs> but <laughs> never say never, right? But, uh, but I think, look, the market... It may be a little concerned about that. I, I think the bigger concern is when you look at companies like FedEx, uh, which has fallen about 12% or so just in the last couple of days on some uh, earnings uh, guidance and uh, or lack thereof. That it's, I mean, this is a very cyclical company in the transportation area, and transports have been doing, it's doing great. And you can see the volume has just been massive on uh, FedEx in the last couple of days. So that's, I think that has uh, concern for the market as we. You know, look at some of these companies and what they say about the next few few months here. Also, companies like Caterpillar, you expect it would be doing fantastic. No, it's actually going the other way. Kind of stabilized at the 200-day moving average in red and then broke down. So, you know, you do have some of these companies that you've got the rails doing really well. You've got FedEx saying some cautious things. You have Caterpillar, this huge conglomerate, saying cautious things. But then there's other parts doing extremely well, like, you know, housing and... Uh, certain transportation stocks, as we mentioned, the rails. So it's it's kind of an interesting economy right now because it kind of depends on the day and, and who you talk to and uh, which company you believe. But uh, going back to the S&P, you know, uh, we had this little scare here in February where it went down a little bit, uh, but it bounced right where we said it, it probably would. And we're kind of in the same area right now where it could could come down and bounce off of this, and that wouldn't even be that wouldn't even be considered a correction. That would just be a one or two bad days, and then we could burst up through. So you know, again, right. What you want to do right now, I think, is obviously the market has been moving up, and if you're holding more cash than you would like because you want to get in there, I think just be careful. You can pick your spots. If you're wanting certain stocks, they may be coming back to you, and and certainly, I think. If you had planned on buying a dip and the dip does come, then you have to stick to your guns and do it. It's very easy to say, I'm going to buy the dip. And then when the market falls 10%, you say, eh, I'm not going to buy that because it could keep going down to 20%. But I would say this, in the big picture here, there still is not a bunch of supply being dumped on the market. In other words, there's not a bunch of antsiness on the part of sellers to dump stocks. The buyers aren't all of a sudden becoming sellers. This is simply, in the last few days, just a as I mentioned, a lethargic buying atmosphere. Uh, And it makes perfect sense. We're at near these old highs. You had the Cypress situation. 
you know, things in Europe are look like they may be deteriorating. Uh, China keeps coming out with very uh, a sketchy economic reports. Sometimes it looks like things are starting to slow down again. And then last night they came out with this PMI flash number that was much better than expected. So you just don't know what you're getting over there. But certainly when you look at things like emerging markets, they continue to fall. Um, so diverging obviously from American markets. Uh, when you look at China, the FXI, again, you can see what's going on there about to break its 200 day moving average. So, you know, the, the, the S&P has kind of been moving on its own accord here, which is great. I mean, I think what's happening is, and we're seeing it with the dollar strengthening. And I don't, I'm not a dollar bull long term, but with the dollar strengthening in the short term here, because where else are people going to go? They trust the dollar versus some of these other currencies. As the dollar increases, what you're seeing is money's coming into the U.S. as a safe haven. And when that money comes in, it goes into our stocks, it goes to our bonds, it is buying real estate down in Florida. And, and so that's a good thing. The dollar going up is a good thing. And, and we haven't seen, really going back several years, where the dollar goes up for a long time and the stock market goes up for a long time. They've been inversely correlated for the most part. Uh, but what we're seeing right now is that they're positively correlated, and that's actually a good thing. So, so that's been positive, but all these other cracks I'm telling you about with Europe, China, the Cyprus situation, those are things that obviously can drag on the stock market here temporarily. And, and I think there's a good chance it will at this point. The market's been overbought. Uh, it was overbought back here. We started to have a sell-off, and now we're even more overbought. And, and that's okay. I mean, we need to work that off a little bit, perhaps. I, would, I think it would be even healthier to get a pullback back to the old breakout in the high 1400s. I don't think we're going to necessarily get that. Um, and what we might see is more of this uh, bust out of the high, and then maybe we get a bigger correction. But, you know, who knows? That's all speculating. That's all prognosticating. That's not what we try to do here. What we try to do is just examine what's going on right now. And what we see is that while demand has slowed down a little bit, uh, dips should still be bought. And if you have some powder dry, you know, a day where it's down 90, yeah, you could put a little money to work. What we're really looking for is maybe two or three days where it's down 90 or 100. Um, and you have, you know, some volume, a little more fear up. We haven't really had that except for maybe a couple of days um, back in uh, February. So, you know, here we are. If we break this trend, then that's something different that we haven't seen really since right after the election, which was four months ago. One of the winners on the day today has been uh, gold. And, uh, you know, I've got a few lines drawn here. And uh, what we saw was really once this little wedge was broken to the downside. And by the way, if you see this technical pattern, the further it goes into that and the tighter it gets, usually that's kind of a bad sign. Usually these things tend to break out early if they're going to be positive and break out to the upside. And so it did break down to the downside. I own very little gold right now. I own some kind of as an investment, but very, very small portion of my equity portfolio. So uh, I mean, I would say in the big picture, probably 1% of everything I do is in gold. So not a big portion. Um, and so that gives me room to buy more if I think the bull market is intact. But really what you've seen is a testing and resistance at the 50-day moving average. And so as the 50-day moving average kind of starts to do this, you know, we want to see if it fails again at that level. Now we do have kind of a double bottom in here, but if it fails there, then we're probably going to continue to go down. What we want to see, if you're on the bullish side, is a breakout. And so gold has been doing well. We also did see today the gold miners, which have been in a long pronounced downtrend. And I know plenty of people who have just gotten hammered in this trade because these stocks do tend to move two, sometimes three times the price of gold. So it's kind of like the end of the tail on the dog, right? Gold goes up a little bit and these stocks go up a, quite a bit. Gold was up today a little bit. And the gold miners were up a lot, up about 2.6% today on GDX, which is just the basket. It's the ETF, the actively traded one, uh, somewhere around 14 and a half million shares uh, traded. So you get a lot of liquidity in this. But uh, this is the trend line that we've been in. And you can see that here. And so what we would expect is if you're wanting to make a trade, you have to look at the upside versus the downside potential. And right now, this is your upside and so is that worth a trade? You know, even though I'm telling you it looks good right now, I have to look at that and say, I could buy some, but if it turns around right there, 
then I either make a you know a quarter of a percent or get out even or maybe have a stop loss, but it wasn't really worth the trade. So what we probably want to see is a breakout, a pullback to the old breakout level, and then that would be the golden time where I would be buying some and we would look for a big, big move up. And you know when you have a pronounced downdraft like this, then we have to start looking at uh, various things like retracement levels. And so if we do get this pull, this, uh, you know, this, this run up, and maybe we even get a little pullback and then a run up and break above that. But if we do get that, you know, you would expect it perhaps to go back up to this old, this is where it kind of broke down was around 45 bucks. And so, yeah, if you, you could take a chance, go ahead and buy it now thinking it's going to get to $45. Um, but it could go up, pull back a little bit first, give you that chance to get in. And then it runs up to 45 and that would be a nice trade. It'd be, you know, 12, 15% trade. So watch that. Gold miners, that was one thing working today. Uh, also, uh, the metals and mining in general, XME, I'm long this one right now and have been for a, a few weeks. It, it really started to kind of break out here. This was the day I bought it right in here once it turned the corner. Kind of ran up. It's been kind of back and fill here and kind of moving sideways. And it was up a little bit today in a really down market. And so what would be what would we expect here is is a move up to 45 that would be a, again another maybe a 10 12% move if it a pause there that's where i would take profits okay and i think there are things working right now but on a day where it's kind of risk off like this uh this is where you want to start actually looking for you don't want to start setting up your your uh shorts unless you're very very nimble because this is still not a market i don't believe to short right now I don't see any reason to short the market. If you want to take profits, that's one thing. You can always buy back. But to short, what happens is if the market goes up, not only are you not making that money, but you're actually losing money. So it's kind of a double whammy. All right, let's finish up with uh, Apple. Apple got a little little pop middle of the day. There was a big uh, options buyer buying some calls. Uh, <laughs> more rumors about what they're going to do with their cash. Well, we know they're going to do something with their cash. Um, and it's going to be soon. And so I think the stock is, you know, at, at the very least dead money. We've talked about that. But if you're wanting to jump the gun on Apple, uh, I think taking a stab of it right here, if you don't have any, uh, this is still a great investment at this level now. Uh, but the thing is, if you want it for a trade, you know, I think what's going to happen is once it breaks this downtrend, that's when you'll start to see some volume and you'll start to see you know, money kind of come into, uh, come into Apple a little quicker. But there has been a little bit of a rotation. You know, what's funny about this is that Apple has turned into, and I put this on Twitter, and if you want to follow me throughout the day, it's twitter.com slash Carl Eggers. But what's funny about this is that Apple is now the new inverse ETF. <laughs> when the market's down, it seems like Apple's up. When the market's up, it seems like Apple is down. And who would have thought if you were to go back six months ago, let's go back a little further. Let's call it nine months ago. Who would have thought, number one, that the economy would be doing what it's doing, which again, don't get me wrong. It's not great, but it's better than what we thought. We're not in a recession. But who would have thought of been doing that? The housing market would be doing what it's doing. People would be talking about a housing bubble right now. Apple would be going down. The stock market would be going up. Companies like BlackBerry which used to be RIM, BlackBerry would be going up, Yahoo would be going up, and Hewlett Packard would be going up. Who, who, who would have thought that, right? But that's the world that we're in. And so we need to adapt. That doesn't mean go buy Yahoo and BlackBerry. And you know, it seems like every day I get more news about big corporations saying they're going to switch and, and switch over from 30,000. They have 30,000 Blackberries and they're going to switch to you know, buy 30,000 iPhones. And, uh, and you know, that's going to continue. I think more and more corporations are going to switch over to Apple. But, uh, but like we've talked about, look, Apple, they, they, they do need to, you know, I, I wonder why they're not coming out and aggressively buying their own stock. And we've talked about that before. So I'm not going to belabor the point, but they're going to do something with it. The stock will probably get a pop, but is it a good investment? I think it is at this point right here. But if you're wanting to really get that is this a, is this an easy trade? I think an easy trade would be once it breaks out a little more uh, than that because right now if it just turns down, it just went right back up to the downtrend line. So continue to watch that, but it is interesting the way Apple is moving inverse to the market right now. And in fact, if you look at companies like Google, 
which is doing some very good things. Money's been coming out of Google the last few days and going into Apple. Some uh, on the street have been talking about some of the chatter has been that uh, big hedge funds and so forth that have been making money with Google you know, now are shifting out of that and seeing Apple as a value and taking the profits from Google and rotating into uh, Apple. So that's what's going on there. Now, we talked about uh, McGraw-Hill. This was one that we had actually purchased, talked about on the podcast going back uh, February 11th. Uh, we bought it either February 11th or, or 8th. One of these two days, we went in and bought McGraw-Hill, wrote a blog piece about it, describing kind of the rationale behind it, why we thought it was a good, uh, a good buy at that point. It was selling a big discount to the market. A lot of the things against it, which was a $5 billion lawsuit from the government, we thought were kind of bogus. McGraw-Hill thought they were bogus. And since that time, the stock had been doing very, very well, really had not much change in this trend until the other day. And uh, so once it rolled over here, I went ahead and took profits on it. We locked in about a maybe an 8% profit, something like that, in, in a pretty short amount of period of time. And you can still argue that McGraw-Hill is still fundamentally sound. This is a conservative company. and But the thing is, the edge isn't there. It's it's still a little cheaper than the market. If you look back over time, kind of where it trades, it was trading at a much bigger discount. So even though we had had just an 8 or 9% move, uh, it's not as appealing as it was. But more importantly, this was more of a technical decision because it's starting to move like the stock market. <clears throat> and so, you know, if we worry about the stock market, this could have a limited upside, at least for the short run. And so as this went up and rolled over, went ahead and took profits. If it pulls back a little bit, even if it was a couple of bucks, uh, we'd probably go ahead and jump back into this one because we do like it fundamentally. It's just that we bought it because it was so out of favor and now it has come back. Also, you'll notice the 200-day moving average in red didn't quite make it up to that, but it is kind of in that area where it started to stall. So just felt like with the market where it is, a uh, little overbought in the short term, go ahead and take the money off in McGraw Hill and that's exactly what we do. So I just want to give you an update on that one since we talked about it at podcast a few weeks ago. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. CarlEggers.com, Twitter.com, slash CarlEggers, Google+, Facebook. We're on iTunes, and EggersCapital.com is the money management website. And again, thank you all for joining me. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful evening.